Praise God, everybody. How you guys doing? <laughs> I hope you guys are doing great. I hope everybody can hear me all right. Instagram, Facebook, how are you guys? Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good day, wherever you are. I just want to welcome you to this day's broadcast. Uh, very eventful indeed. It's going to be great. And like I always say, if you know anybody who should be here now, please reach out to them and tell them to run down here because something very historic is about to happen. And I'm serious, I'm not joking with you. Something very, very significant is going to happen here today. Uh, we're going to hear quite a number of life transforming information, truths that are going to generations to come. Because it's not just about you and you alone. We're talking about generational deliverance. Uh, from this evil that we are coming to deal with today. So you need to get people to come on. As many people as need to be here, wake them up. Sometimes my videos don't get to be seen by my, mem uh, my followers. So just reach out to people and tell them to hook on, you know, because uh, there's a difference between being told or watching after and then being there live when it's happening. God bless you. Thank you all for all the wishes. I really Literally, I am so humble, you know, I, I don't know where to start. Like, <laughs> when I saw how a friend of mine called me and he was like, wow, look at all the likes and loves and comments going to your picture. Like, just a few minutes after I posted that picture, it was just like a flood, you know. So, I mean, I am just humble. And I want to say a very big thank you to all of you guys wishing me happy birthday. Die, you will live to declare the goodness of God, and you're gonna celebrate your own birthdays in the days and years to come. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, thank you so much. I really appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Okay, I want us to pray. Ancient of days, we just want to thank you. Oh, Zima Nukutu Zundre Namakuria Mantele Brose, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. <laughs> Father, we thank you. Of a truth, without you, O oh God, we are nothing. Your word says, O oh God, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. You shall know the truth, and this truth will set you free. Ancient of days. Come and impact us with the truth. Come and speak the undiluted truth to us. The truth that sets free. The truth that breaks every yoke of darkness. The truth that separates the chaff from the wheat. And we take authority, O oh God. We run angels of God into the atmosphere to take control right now by the power in the name of Jesus. Holy living God, take absolute control from this time. And may all the glory be returned unto the King Immortal. The invisible, the all knowing one, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So, in case you're here and you don't know why you are here today, I am happy to announce to you that what we're here to do today, we're here to unravel the mystery that is called masturbation and what you call soul ties. And in order to unravel this masturbation, in order to unravel this masturbation, we are going to tell stories. I would like you to hear my story. 
Because if I don't tell you my story, you will not understand. I have to tell you my story. I have to tell you my story. I love human stories. I love stories that you can connect with. Stories that you can relate with. I love it. Because if I don't tell you, you know, what I seek to accomplish from this program is that in the end, I want to be able to have demystified masturbation opportunity to come out to speak about it to talk about it to just you know belittle that nonsense that has helped people bound for so many years generations generations suffering from masturbation and people are wondering why am I the way I am? Why are things like this? They don't understand where this is coming from. The evils of masturbation. We will unravel it today by the special grace of God. And so in the book of Genesis chapter 14, there's a story that I know a lot of people already know about. In the book of Genesis chapter 14, the Bible says Abraham paid a tithe, a tenth, of everything he got to Melchizedek. He paid to Melchizedek. As at that time, the Levi, his son, who is the father of the Levites, had not been born. He was still in his loins. Because, you know, men are the ones who carry children. Women actually incubate and give birth to them. But children are in the loins of men. Do you know a man watching me today? That you are a career of seeds. Your children are in your loins. That's why men are so tremendously under attack. And so the Bible says, Abraham paid that to Melchizedek. But then in the book of Hebrews, I think it was Hebrews 9, the Bible was saying that actually... Levi had paid tithe to Melchizedek, a man who was alive when Levi was still not born. And you wonder, how could Levi, who was not born when the father paid the tithe, how could he have paid tithe to Melchizedek, who died before he was even conceived? You know why? Because when Abraham paid that tithe to Melchizedek, and the son was in his loins, it was imputed unto him that he too paid the tithe. And so the blessing that Melchizedek gave to him at that time, Levi also inherited the blessing. And what do we call this? We call it generational blessings. You know, when you hear generational curses, people think generational curses are only uh, the only thing that happened. There are also generational blessings. It's not only generational curses. Unfortunately, in this modern era, what we are greeted with, most of us, especially from Africa, are generational curses. And so that was how my own story began. I come from a family where the ancestors were so obsessed with power. They needed power by every means. I was told that my ancestors committed all kinds of crime in order to get power from the devil. They even pounded babies alive. They killed women alive. They arrested and killed virgins. All kinds of stuff happened. And this is the story with so many families in Africa. And when they were doing all these things that the devil told them to do so they can get power and become the kings and become the warriors. You know what was going on? They were making promises with the devil that the children in their loins, the generations unborn, are going to be the ones that they are going to dedicate them to devil. And the devil was so happy because he had already seen the future of the generation. That these men were giving to the enemy because of something that they were going to get at that moment up generations to come and so my father is just one of the many in that family he was lucky he married a woman who likes going to church and then we were born three my brother my sister and myself 
Now, this curse by right is supposed to be operational in the lives of all my mother's children. This curse was supposed to be in the life of everybody. And the curse that they, we inherited is that we must never go forward in life. The curse we inherited is that money will never stay in our hands. The curse we inherited is that we will never be successful in even our relationships. The curse was so bad that it meant that we must remain even in the village and not be exposed to anything outside. That's how it was. And I was supposed to have inherited this curse. Give me one moment. It looks like we're having a little issue with uh, Facebook. I'm not sure Facebook is responsive. I don't want any distraction on this program. Um, just give me one moment. Okay, uh, Facebook, I don't know if you guys can see me now. I'm sure Facebook should be live right now. Facebook, are you live? Praise God. Okay, so we're live on Facebook. Yeah, there was a little obstruction. And so, I was not meant to actually be anything. None of us were meant to be anything in life because we inherited this evil curse from our ancestors. Guess what? Remember, if you are a child and you're growing up and you are a virgin and you are innocent, okay, just start from the innocence and you're innocent, actually, you are protected from all these evils. That's why if an innocent child dies, and mostly children are usually innocent until about age of 12, 13, thereabout, and if you die at that age as a child in the innocent stage, you're actually going to go to heaven. So what happens is that the devil always waits for that child at the ch that time that the child crosses that age of innocence and enters into puberty. The moment they cross, they will present you with the offer. They will carry the chains to come because the ancestral curses are like task force. They wait for every offspring from that family to come. The moment you show up, they come up with the chains. And how do they throw the chains on your wrist? They send masturbation into your life. All kinds of issues, but they use masturbation the most to activate the curse in the life of that individual. So, I'm still telling you my story. And so, in my own story, my elder brother, he was a virgin, he remained a virgin, continued to be a virgin, refused to let anything affect him, and he refused until he got married. He got married as a virgin and he married a virgin. My kid sister, she remained a virgin. She continued and refused distractions. When she got married, she married a virgin and she got married to a virgin. Joseph Okechuku, boom! I entered. You know where they got me from my own? I was watching a magazine. Some uncle came from abroad or from Lagos or something and came home and he brought a pornographic magazine and they hid it somewhere. And somehow, somehow, I just stumbled on this pornographic magazine and I saw the images and it was so mysterious how even this magazine ended up in my home. Because normally you would not see any such thing in my home. I don't know whether the guy came to our house and he forgot it and I stumbled on the magazine and then I saw these pornographic images. I was between 12, 13 or 14 at that moment. I had just left my age of innocence. I couldn't continue with my virginity. So they got me there and they presented me with the offer. That was when I started masturbating. And as soon as I got involved in masturbation, they took the chains from my ancestors. The chains that the devil gave them right to hold and they changed me immediately. And so my elder brother will be moving forward in life. My kid sister will be moving forward in life. But I was moving backward. And you know what they attack the most? It is your finances and your education. If you are somebody who is in school, let me tell you because some of you can relate to this. I would write exams for people. They will pass. But when I write my own, I will fail. Can I say it again? 
I would write exams. The people I write for will pass, but I will fail the exam. The chains have been put on my wrist spiritually because masturbation has come in to activate the curse upon my life. They had to use something to activate the curse. If it is not activated, it will not have effect on you. So they have to put masturbation. And not only that they activated it with masturbation, that masturbation is what I'm going to use to continue to renew the validity of that curse in my life every day I masturbate. That was my story. My life came to a standstill. I was going about telling people that I was a virgin, but I was a chronic masturbator. I would masturbate, masturbate anywhere, anyhow. I would finish praying now, and as soon as I say amen, I would still masturbate. I masturbated inside a church building while service was going on in church. I want you to have this on record. See, because today we are going to demystify this evil. And today, by the special grace of God, everything will be over. You will not suffer from this menace again. I said church service was going on. I was in church. I masturbated inside the church. It is so powerful that you can... It's so, that's why when people are writing me, telling me how they suffer and labor under masturbation, I understand no, you need to understand that I understand. I was there for 20 whole years plus. So don't, you don't need to go too far to explain to me. When the air blows into your room where you are, it's so difficult at that moment to even begin to resist. It holds you so tight. You don't know, you don't have any other choice than to just go ahead and you do it. So I masturbated and I kept masturbating and I kept masturbating. And my life kept spiraling out of control, out of control, out of control. You see, there's a sister who used to follow me. She called me one day. She said, Brother Joe, I have a very troubling story from my daughter who just turned 13. Her daughter just turned 13, a very beautiful girl. And in their family, there's a, a generational curse in the family. The generational curse in the family is that when nobody is allowed to get married and stay in the marriage... Anybody who gets married, the marriage must break. All of them are single, single mothers everywhere in that family. Single, single motherhood everywhere. They just don't know what to do about it. It's a generational curse. It's a chain. And so her daughter had a dream. In the dream that the daughter had, a woman came in at a crossroads. And the woman at the crossroads looked at the daughter and said, come, come and meet me. She was carrying some things that she wanted to use to give to the child at the crossroads. And so when she was telling me this, she didn't tell me that the child had already started bleeding. So when she finished telling me all the story, I asked her, I said, your daughter, has she started seeing her menses? She said, for the first time, this girl just saw her menses. And immediately after she saw her menses, the girl had this dream. And I said to her, listen, seeing her menses means that she has left the age of innocence. And so she has gotten to the junction where she will be presented with the bondage of the family. So they were coming to give her the chains that, is, that are meant for the family. So that no matter where she goes in life, the same thing that happened to her mother and her aunties will still happen to the girl. And you know, if she had received that thing in the dream... She said the woman keeps coming to her dream every time to give her the thing and she keeps refusing. If he had, she had received it, it means that the next minute that girl will go and be violated. She will go and get involved in sexual intercourse or start masturbating or stop, and then she will begin to activate this evil, evil every day upon her life. And she will start doing so bad in her education. A very bright child will go to school. She will not score anything at school. This is what masturbation does. Masturbation focuses more especially on your finances and your education. So this is just me telling you my story and how this thing works with ancestral curses. But by the way, what is masturbation? And so I wrote a different definition for masturbation. And I want you to pay very close attention. I'm going to read it out for you. I wrote a different definition for masturbation. 
I wrote that masturbation is a meditative stimulation of your sexual organs. A meditative, meditative stimulation of your sexual organs in order to arouse sexual feelings and derive sexual pleasure, which most often than not leads to orgasmic discharges. A meditative stimulation of your organs. It's not just to stimulate. No, meditative. I know a lot of people have asked me, oh, Brother Joe, what about when you withdraw? Okay, so if you are an adult and you know withdraw, you should know it. I'm not going to explain what it is, but you know. But when you do withdraw, withdraw is not masturbation. Withdrawal is called coitus interruptus. Coitus, C-O-I-T-U-S, interruptus from interrupt and then put U-S after the end of it, after the T. Interruptus, coitus interruptus. That's what it, it is not masturbation. In masturbation, you take a spiritual journey. You embark on a spiritual journey to give out your life. For the manufacture of demons, and I will break it down for you and explain to you right now. You're giving yourself away. There's a movie called Satanis. It is a movie about satanic mass. You know the way you have Catholic mass. You have satanic mass. Okay, ceremony, celebration of mass. In that movie, in that movie, the founder of Church of Satan, his name is Anton Zadon Lave. Anton Lave said clearly in the movie that the greatest, let me read the way he said it. He said, The greatest of all secret sacrifices during ceremony of rituals is, of course, the spilling of the seed on the ground. The spilling of the seed on the ground, the greatest of all secret sacrifices. During the ceremony of rituals. In fact, the man says that taking your sperm and pouring it on the ground when you masturbate is a higher sacrifice than killing a human being and cutting their throat and letting the blood flow on the ground. <laughs> you don't know what you did yourself involved in. That's why the Bible says, you shall know the truth and that truth will set you free. You will know the truth today. They have doctors all over the places lying to you, telling you about prostate cancer. If you don't masturbate, this will happen. Bloody lie. They have all kinds of people telling you, oh, you need to do this so you can sleep and rest. No, masturbation makes you sleepless. You have a lot of insomnia when you masturbate. This is first hand account I'm giving you. You have brain fog when you masturbate. Your brain is clouded. You can't think clearly. Everything they say you can get when you masturbate that will make work for you, all of them work against you. They are lying to you because they are, this is a merchant. They are merchandising your soul. I will prove it to you today. Praise God. I hope you're ready to learn something today. I hope you're ready to learn something today. You take your, your this thing, you put it. They, they, you, you hear there's a song they call soapy, 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 soapy. You do soapy, you pour it on the ground. When I heard that from the founder of Church of Satan, the first thing that came to my mind is, oh my God, how can pouring your semen on the ground be more dangerous or a higher sacrifice than killing a human being? Or killing animals, rather. I said, oh, How? And God began to give me lectures on what that actually implies and I will share it with you now. So, when you take a human semen, the semen of a man, and you pour it on the ground, you know, the semen is not the type of thing you just go and urinate like you urinate in the, your urine in the, in the bathroom, right? The semen has to go through a spiritual process before it comes out. And that's what you have, why you have what you call the orgasm. So when the semen drops on the ground, what is dropping on the ground is the entirety of you. That is why it is called a seed. 
The seed contains the entire information, the DNA, the emotional and all the spiritual component, the physiological component of a man. The entirety of the man is on the ground. So it's like taking yourself and sacrificing yourself for the demons on the ground. And so the moment that thing drops on the floor, that means you have committed a sacrifice, you've sacrificed yourself and dropped on the ground. Every sperm that drops on the ground, there are all these components exist as energies. So the demons gather there and they collect all these energies one after the other. Your emotions, your this, your that, your manners, everything. They collect everything. Your power, your dominion power is embedded in every single sperm that you drop on the ground. You don't believe me, right? Okay. The Bible says something in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. It says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth upon the earth. God gave them, he blessed them. What do you call blessing? Blessing is a transfer of virtue. He transferred the virtues on them and it went in. Every time you reach orgasm, every of this thing that God said comes out together with your sperm. And that's what the devil has been seeking. You know, evil spirits, before they can move over the realms of human beings on earth, they need the human energy. What do you think happened when the Bible said that God took a clay and put clay together and then he did something on the clay and the clay became flesh and blood with a soul? How can ordinary soil become flesh and blood if a supernatural energy of God has not been imputed into that, that clay? That supernatural energy that is imputed there is like a gold mine. It's like the oil well. That's what demons are looking for. That's what you give to them every day. When you masturbate. It's like an oil well. They mine it. They need it. They mine it. They need it. They need it. They need it. They need it all over. So we give it to them. The revelation power. The dominion power. Every single thing about you. You give them. When you masturbate. Because they are embedded. That's why if you look at a tree that produces seeds, the seeds are produced every day, every day. You see the seed is pouring and pouring. After some time, you will notice that this tree is no longer producing as much as it used to produce before. Because the tree is now drawn, it is dry, it has given up everything that it has. Then the tree begins to die. Why do you think your sperm is called seed? Because it is an entirety of you that you are dropping. And every time you drop that you, that you is used to transform a demon into a subhuman demon. I'm not sure you believe what I'm saying, right? You don't believe me, right? Okay, I'm going to pose a question to you right now. How many of you believe that demons or spirits have genders? Ever in all your life since you have been checking that the scripture or doing anything that you do, have you ever heard that the spirits have genders? Have you ever heard that there is a female spirit and a male spirit before? Spirits do not have genders. But today you have what you call spirit wife and spirit husband. How did we end up with spirit wife and spirit husband? <laughs> How did you end up with spirit husband and spirit wife? Because the feminine energy which you give out during masturbation is what is imputed and sucked by these demons. When they suck it up, it transforms a demon into a female energy. The male energy that you give out is what the other demons take and transform into a male energy. So when they come to you at night, if you're a woman, is making love to you just like a man. When they come to you as a man, okay, is making love to you just like a woman. This is how we manage to be able to donate our essences 
to demons and we transform them into female and male spirits. That's how you got to have what you call the a spirit wife and spirit husband. There was nothing like that before. Did you notice that before man came, animals, the demons were using the energy of animals to be able to navigate into our world? I keep telling you this. They are not meant to enter our world unless they have our energy because we were created specially for this world. Demons were built for hell. So before a devil can come into your abode to oppress you, he needs your own energy, your breath, your life to be able to do that. And that's what we give to them every day during masturbation. That's why if you see people who masturbate chronically a lot, notice that there's always a presence of evil that hovers around in the environment. You notice there's something that used to press you down in the, in the night. When you sleep, something will be pressing you, pressing you down. That is the presence of the demons you have helped to bring to the world. Let me break this down for you, for you a little bit further. Some of you know what is called yoga, right? You, you, you know about yoga. So, Hatha yoga is the normal, regular yoga that people do, exercise yoga. Now, there's, what, there's something that is called pranayama, breath control and all the rest of them. Anybody who is involved in yoga, I want you to go and do this research and confirm and prove whether I am right or wrong. Anybody, if you're only doing the exercise, ask your trainer, is exercise yoga the end point of yoga? The very final bus stop in yoga is called Kundalini Yoga or Raja Yoga. In Raja Yoga, you are taught how to wake the Kundalini up. They call it a sleep. Kundalini means serpent. A sleeping serpent. You wake the sleeping serpent up. How do you wake the serpent up? How you wake it up is that you will go. They tell you to picture a pyramid in your mind. And the pyramid is surrounded by, surrounded by fire. And so they say, collect that serpent and put it at the base of your spine. When you put it at the base of your spine, then you take a deep breath and throw your breath on that serpent. And the serpent wakes up and climbs up to the point of your brain, to your pineal gland, and begins to control you. That's why many people who get involved in Kundalini Yoga, which is the more radical aspect of yoga, they always get possessed by the devil. So, and they tell you that the higher, the stronger your imagination, the more, the better results you are going to get, which is exactly what happens in masturbation. The stronger your imagination in that masturbation, the more your results during that masturbation. That's why anybody who masturbates, check them very well. They are completely drained spiritually. Everything you are doing is just a waste of time. You are drained. Nothing is left inside of you. You are drained. You are spiritually, you are drained. Emotionally, you are drained. You, you just see yourself like somebody who is floating. Because every essence you have, you are giving it out to demons. Go and Google what we call hybrid humans. Hybrid humans, which aliens will come and, and take people, abduct them, take them into the spirit.